Hey YouTube, Mr. Dodo from Fortnite here. Um, I'm going to be doing a little video on, um, well, I'm going to be modifying my, um, uh, well, standard Hornby controller R965. Um, I'm not going to be modifying the actual um, electrics of it or anything like that. I'm, I'm just what I'm going to be doing is adding a little switch. Um, so I'll just briefly explain, um, well, what's happening. Well, basically this here is for the lights. Um, as some people will know, if you add a lighting rig to your um, layout, you either have to run have to run a separate bus wire, um, or you have to have the lights on the whole time. Um, and I didn't want the lights on the whole time. I didn't really want to go out and buy more wire. Um, is what I've actually done is just added an extra cable in. So I'll just briefly explain how all my bus wires work. And now underneath the layout, I've got well, I've got a main bus wire for the um, actual track. Um, and that one works off the, um, well, works off this control um, for the speed. Then I've got these two cables here, which is the um, accessories bus wire, which goes on the two end here. Um, off this powers the point motors and things like that. Um, as well as that, when I first wired it all up, they also powered the lights. Um, and the problem I was having is, if I wanted to use the point modes, I had to have the lights the whole time. And I was getting a little bit, um, I didn't really want them on the whole time. So I then added this extra negative wire, um, and basically it's how it works is the lights come off the positive feed um, on the um, point motor wire, and then it goes to the negative feed on the, uh, well, on this, on the uh, spare negative wire. And this wire here was going to be, um, well, I was going to make a hole in the wood and then put this onto the switch, and that wire would create a circuit that um, I would be able to turn the lights off in without having to turn off everything. Um, when it came down to it, the switch I use is just too small to fit in the wood. Um, and after doing a little bit of looking around, I worked out that this switch will actually fit quite nicely, just there, um, sorry, just there on the controller. Um, sorry, turn it to the camera and see a bit better. Um, so what I've got to do is drill a holes, well, drill some holes there, cut it out to the correct square. Um, but before doing that, I've got to remove the top um, to make sure I don't damage anything um, as I do it. I'll then be feeding the wire, this wire here, through the hole with the other um, well, uh, wire to the track. I'll then be feeding another wire back through the hole uh, which will join on to the negative of the accessory ports here. So it's quite simple um, and once that's in I'll be able to turn off the lights on and off individually. So we're going to have to obviously separate it all first. Um, I'm going to have, well, they're held on with a few bits. Um, these down here are rivets, there's one on each corner. Um, that's one of them. There's one on each corner. They need drilling out. Um, the only thing to say is once you've drilled them out, you won't be able to obviously put rivets in there without going out and getting them. So I don't really bother with that. Um, you've also got bolts on the end here. Underneath the dial, there's a big nut. And there's like, um, well, just a bit of a plastic grommet in the end here, which is like a friction fit. So we're going to start off with um, removing it all. Um, I haven't got round to, um, I haven't drilled out the holes yet, so I'll be showing you that in a minute. But I'm just going to get off this bit here. Um, first, I'm going to start with these on the side, very simple. Unscrew them. And then there's another little bolt underneath. Um, if I can find my pliers or hand. There they are. Shouldn't be too hard to undo it. Try not to lose any of this stuff because, uh, well, it'll just be annoying and you'll have to try and find something that will fit. There we go. Right then. So once this is off, you then have to move on to the top here, which is what I'm going to be doing next. Right, and I've got to find my screwdriver. Um, it's just a small, flat end screwdriver, which is what you need. Um, and this bit here just pulls off, just friction. So what you have to do is you have to get your screwdriver underneath at the edges and just lift it up slowly until it gets loose. And then as you pull it off, you'll drop it. Um, there you go. Oh, that's a lot nicer. I didn't realise this. Um, usually, well, some models, um, this here is uh, the later one made in England. What's it? February 1999. On the bottom, that's its um, date. Um, but I know that some of them have got 
plastic here and a metal nut. And it's what the problem you had is when you did it back up, you would actually damage the plastic threads if you, well, crossed over the nut. So there we go, this will come off quite easy. Hopefully at least. There we go, it's moving. underneath Hold on. there we go so I'm now done on everything the only bit that's holding it together is the friction on the back and all of these four screws so I've got to uh, undrill them um, and then we can get a move on with uh, making my well adding my little screw. so just really the final wall um, and what it does all you have to do is just put a bit of downward pressure and you only need to knock out about the top Oh, you only actually need to go down about half a mil into the plastic just to knock off the top plastic lip um, and then you have to just gently work around all the corners again I'm using the same flat screw that I did earlier and there we go there is the base off and uh, now we've got your circuit board here uh, this here is just held in with friction that was the point of undoing these screws in here so if you're careful um, so we'll push it a bit from all angles, wiggle it down a bit, there we go. Right now this is your circuit board, um, as I said this is a slightly more modern controller, 2000 and um, well 2000, well, I'm sorry, 1990, I meant to say then. Um, if anyone's interested, they're very simple how they work. Um, obviously, they're different, this is slightly modern. You've got your speed control and direction control, don't need to really worry about that. But the power comes in, um, as you can see on the rear grid here, um, and then it goes straight along this bit here. Sorry, I'm out of camera, I didn't notice that. Ha, there we go. Sorry, um, this here, it comes down here and goes straight to the auxiliary sockets there. Uh, and then one more down the other side which goes to the same place um, turn it over so the power, it, well simple enough it comes in um, it, all these dies and stuff are just to stop it damaging and things like that it's heat sink thing there as well um, goes to your um, speed control to change how much um, how much current you want going to the track and then through the direction control to choose your direction it's very simple like that but I don't need to change this, touch this, do anything to that at all I'm going to, just in case I damage it, is what I need to be interested in at least, is this piece here. I wanted to remove the circle so it didn't damage anything. The other thing I want to do is just check that where I want to put it, there's going to be clearance. Now, camera up slightly, there we go. Where I want to put it, my little switch is just here. Um, and there is clearance, because you can see here, it correlates to about there. Uh, which means there's going to be enough clearance for me to do the work. So, keeping that out of the way, I now need to start drilling the holes to the correct size. And beautiful, you haven't lost your drill bit, which is here. And two little holes to start off with. I've got a bent drill bit, which is why the drill's moving around a lot, but, oh well. Turn to the other side. Two holes there. Um, just say, before I did those holes, I'd already placed this on there, and then I'd gone around the outside um, with a sharp knife to mark where the outside of this is, and how much you'd cut. I'd look at this, and I know I've got to leave a little lip on either end, um, so that it sits on there, I can glue it down, actually, is what I'm going to be doing. Oh, one other thing I was meant to say, um, before you start doing anything with the drilling bit, you've got to make sure there's no power, so remove the power socket from the end, uh, and then that way it'll stop um, any, well, you accidentally electrocuting yourself. <clears throat> Here we go. Sharp knife. Quite thick plastic, actually. And then once you've 
once you've cut through on one side, uh, then move on to the next side. So I'm just going to cut out a square hole now, and then I'll... So I've now made my hole, um, just see, right here, um, and I've checked the fit. It was a bit of a sort of a trial and error until I got the right size, but it now slides in nicely. Um, now the next thing I'll do is um, solder this up, um, and then run a wire from um, the switch, the back of the switch, to the well, one of these um, terminals. Um, so, well, to solder it up, um, I have checked the switch works, so I know that much. Um, always check that before you start. Um, but what you've got to do is push the wire through first, and then as this sits on it, um, it actually sits with a gap down the edge, so the wires can fit through. Um, but the wires are going to have to sort of work their way around um, to the back and sit in that groove like that um, with the other wires. So I might have to cut that groove bigger or cut a new groove. I'm not too sure at the moment. But anyway, so I've got to solder this on. Solder's just warming up at the moment. So clear a bit of space. Them. Now this is actually a two-way switch, um, well there's three points in there but it's what I found out is the middle is um, well the in and the two outsides are the out so I'm going to solder this to one of those two outsides, um, it will fit in there hopefully it should do at least, just going to wrap it up and then we'll be soldering a little wire to the middle which as I said will go to the um, negative of the outputs, so and that's a bit of heat in it now. So I'm going to have to do this so it's facing me, um, only because it's slightly easier that way. So let me kick it over so I've got the wire tangled up. Um, so what you need is solder flux, things like that. Well, I think everyone knows what you need for soldering really, but if you don't, flux to clean, you need a clean surface, flux to clean it, um, also helps it run, and the solder as well as soldering iron. Now this solder's got flux in it already, so I don't need anything like that. The one thing this has got though, get the fuse. I'm actually going to stop the camera now and solder it and then I'll turn it back on and show you how I've done it. Um, so I've now soldered on the wires. Um, the way I've done it is the completely I've cut, it, cut in half um, and now the negative can go. Now I can turn the switch either direction um, and I will get the, the, the negative um, current running which is what I need. So um, yeah now it's done now I've just got to stick it all back in here make sure it's all firmly attached down so it won't come loose. And uh, then I will be um, ready to attach it onto the circuit board and then close it all back up. So I've done the soldering now. Um, simple enough. Those two wires onto this side and then the, in the uh, well, the uh, in wire onto the other side or out or whichever you want. Color coded it so green and black so I can get mixed up. And now I've got to cut this and attach it onto the circuit board. So that's what I'll be doing next. Uh, keep it long. Feed it through. There we go. And friction fit in. And we now have a switch in here. Friction fit. I'm not going to glue it in case I ever need to take it out for some reason. Um, but it's what I am now going to do is um, see if the circuit board will fit. Because uh, I might need to cut a new hole for the wires to fit through. Because um, there's now three, there's now five going through the hole, which was designed for two. So I'm going to see how that works. So I've now put the bottom back on. Um, I did in the end have to cut this hole slightly bigger to get all the wires. Sorry. Let's move the camera actually. There we go. 
I did in the end have to cut all the holes to make the um, wire, I'd cut a big holes to make the wire fit through. Um, but other than that, it's all worked. I don't really think you need to see how I wired it. It was just, uh, well, um, the wires basically run uh, in here right up to the top and then around the side and back. Um, I did in the end put a little bit of blob of glue just to hold the wires so they don't move around too much. But uh, once the control has been attached, now it should be fine. So now back onto the reconstruction and uh, what I mean by that is simply just the big screw in the middle at the moment. The reason for that is it needs to be tested to make sure I haven't damaged anything. Uh, also tested that it still works. That's good. So I'm just going to have a quick test of this. Um, and as all I'm going to do is wrap the positive around this. So I know it's all backwards to the camera too. I'll show you in a second. Um, so I've just wrapped one wire around one of them. The black wire, which I know is the negative wire, around the other one. If you can, always use black as negative. doesn't matter what the positive colour is, but black negative all over the layout um, will make it easy. Just need to... go put that one around the negative as well and then power it up so the first thing I'm going to check is yes the train is working let's turn off the power first all oh, there we go yep so that's working point motors are working and the lights are going on and off that is the official test. So, I've tested all the things, so the switch turns the lights on and off. You can just see the lights flickering on and off. It's now working on a switch. At the same time, hopefully you can hear this. You should be able to hear a point motor. Point motors are going, and as I showed you a second ago, the loco moves. So, final bits, always remove the power whenever you do anything on these, just so you don't electrocute yourself. So the final bit is just the last of the reconstruction, putting it all back together. Reconstruction is the wrong word, I'm sorry about that. Uh, make sure that's tight. It's impossible to put this on the wrong way because it has a flat edge. Um, I mean, in there, there's a flat edge and so's on that. done. Two little screws on. And then put on the uh, top two screws, put your wires in, do them up tight and then that is it. I'm going to cut this one down, which you don't need to see me doing just so it's out of the way a bit. And then that is it. Um, I've added a little switch to this which now turns the lights on and off um, without me having to have turned the um, point motors on and off. So yeah, hopefully you found that useful. Um, I will do, yeah, I'll do a quick video, like two minutes or something, of my bus wires so you can see how, what I was on about when I said I got four bus wires or something. Um, but I think it's the simplest way of powering a slightly larger, more complicated um, layout. So yeah, so thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully you found this useful. If you have any comments, and please leave them below, question about this or anything like that. Um, as always, please check out my channel, comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.